Hello once again, uh, great to have you with us. Welcome to another episode of Rovers Roundup Live. I think this is my fourth of the season. Uh, it's great to have you with us. We are brought to you in conjunction with GNC Industrial Cleaning. And joining us today, we've got Lewis Johnson and Muiz Mustafa. Uh, afternoon to you guys, are you well? Yeah, good, thanks, thanks for having us, Paul. Well. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, you've um, done a bit of training today. How, how was training? How was, was it busy, busy for you? Um, it's just really recovery, wasn't it? I was having just a long video. So one one of the things you've done today is, is video from uh, Sunday's game against Wakefield. So uh, not a ne not necessarily a great occasion, is it? You know, but it's it's got to be done, hasn't it? In terms of analysis, w what what could we have done better? Um, we could have been been a bit more aggressive. I thought um, there's lots of different lots of lots of are areas we, need, we should have worked on, like. We made too many, way, way too many errors, personally. I just gave him too much ball and gave him more possessions. So obviously, they had more opportunities to score. Yeah, and for you, Moise, was was that the sort of gist of what um, Tony was saying to you? Yeah, um, that's what Tony said, and that's what all the lads said. So we all agreed. We all knew we caused ourselves harm. So, yeah. And, and, and Lewis, how does this process work in terms of watching the video? Is it a case of Tony shouting and screaming at you guys, telling you where you've gone wrong, or is it a case of a, a, a joint discussion about how things could have gone better? Um, Tony's not really a shouter to him, he's quite um, a chilled out guy, so um, today we kind of switched up a bit, it was more, we just sat through and watched the game, and we discussed it, and he had his own um, input on the end, so I think that worked well, we got a lot of feedback from it. Very good, uh, and obviously it's a, it's a much uh, uh, more positive occasion when you've had a win, uh, but there's still lessons to be learned, isn't there? When you've had a win, how could we have done things better and 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 and, and had a more positive victory? You know, same as in, in the Castleford game, for example. Yeah, definitely. I think even in the Castle game, we won, but we still we still knew there was stuff to do. We're still we're still building. We're nowhere near the finished uh, product yet, so it's um, still exciting times for us. We'll have a chat with you both about the game uh, on Sunday, and also we'll look forward as well. We'll have a look forward to the excitement of. Uh, the fans returning, the league game of course, uh, this weekend we'll see fans back into uh, the stadium for the first time in 15-16 months. Uh, Hull College Craven Park will once again have the sound of the fans, we're looking forward to that. One of the big things of course, one of the significant uh, uh, issues within the game over the past week which uh, certainly involved Hull Kingston Rovers is the uh, news regarding the academy uh, set up for the Super League and, and how the Rugby Football League want to move forward with that. Uh, Hull Kingston Rovers are going to seek, this is uh, what the club are saying, uh, will seek from the RFL an urgent independent review of its elite academy application. The club consider its application to have been strong and meritorious and that one of the two remaining places left open by the process should be granted to the club. At no stage before the announcement, nor during the process, has the club received any feedback whatsoever on its application. And uh, Rovers are overwhelmed with the support of uh, the level of support over the past 24 hours from its friends within the game, including from within the local community game. Equally, though, the club are deeply concerned by the devastating impact this decision has had on its staff and young players and uh, the club say that they will contest the decision as a matter of urgency. Certainly a disappointing decision uh, but the club will do everything in its power to challenge it with the review. So watch this space, I'm sure uh, that is a story to keep an eye on. Um, let's have a chat to you guys, thanks very much for joining us. Um, how have you found uh, your time at the club so far, Lewis? Because you was uh, here on loan um, a little while back, so you had a little feel of what the club was like, and how, how have you found your time here in 2021? Uh, yeah, when I was in 2019, I came here for a month and just loved it. It was a complete change of what I was used to, both playing in front of the fans, and um, as soon as I had a chance to come back again, I just uh, grabbed my chance quickly, and um, just been enjoying it ever since. What, what was it about the club that you enjoyed? What was the was it the vibe, the feel, the, the staff, the, the, the fans? What was it about the club that made you feel this is a positive place for you? Um, probably with the staff, um, it was a bit of a change, different personalities, probably more f more suited for me because I'm quite um, a, chilled, a chilled out guy and they're quite chilled out as well yeah. and um, I get on with them quite well as well. 
You played nine times for Warrington. Um, you, I, I thought you'd played more, to be honest. I did check my stats. I think that's correct. You made your debut against Wigan. You, do you remember that debut? You, you, uh, you'd want to play against Wigan, weren't you? One of the big sides as a debut. It's certainly a, a significant game for you. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember that. It was, it was, it, well, it was a bit of a blur result, to be fair, because it's obviously Wigan, an aggressive game. It was the first time I ever played in the middle as well, so that was a bit, a bit different to what I'm used to, because I've always played second row. So it was interesting. You uh, you did the you came to Rovers of course uh, in the swap deal we did with um, uh, Robbie Mulhern um, on a on a uh, two year contract. You um, you've you've obviously spoke positively there about uh, your time so far at the club. And do you feel that this is the the, the start of your the real start of your career in terms of you know how, going forward as a professional? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that um, Tony, Danny, Stan. And the other, the other coach can help me like get to that next level. It's my um, probably issue has been I've not really played consistent rugby. I've always been in and out, and this is the most I've ever played that like, consistently. So I'm just looking to keep adding on that. Really, it must be a good feeling knowing that um, you know if your form's good and nobody's nobody's place is guaranteed, of course. But if your form's good, you've got a really strong shout of getting getting within the seventeen, and that must be a great feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Tony's one of them, he really believes in um, what you can bring to the team and um, he's always testing you mentally and physically on what you can do better to improve, which I really like. And what are the things that you want to improve on? What are, what are your aims uh, in terms of this season ahead? Where do you want to be at the end of the season in terms of improvement? Um, just you, just used to playing probably big minutes because I've never really played big minutes apart from really academy. Um, just pretty much play every week or as much as possible and just try and keep my performances quite high on a regular basis. Still early in the season, uh, Lewis, but uh, what, what's a, a big moment for you, a highlight for you so far? I imagine the, the win against Castle for the last week must have uh, been enjoyable. Yeah, that was um, something different really because obviously we've not played rugby for a while. All the boys were saying when we came out it was a bit weird, especially if it was just Cast fans as well, but it was good to get the win there. We, we kind of um, silenced the crowd, so that was quite good. Good, good stuff. Moise, uh, you know, welcome to the club. Uh, you're just a few games, of course, into what is a loan spell for you, isn't it? Your, yeah. your, your current club is uh, Leeds, but you're with us for the season, is that right? Yeah, I'm on um, season-long loan. Um, then I um, might see where I'm not too sure what will happen at the end of it. That's a discussion for for, yeah, for after the season, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Uh, how, uh, m mentally, how how does that work for you? Do you feel like a whole Kingston Rovers player? Is it in terms of I've got you know I'm I'm hundred percent immersed into the club to to help me do the best that I can? Um, yeah, definitely. Obviously, um, I came here during pre-season, so I've got to know all the lads and connect with everyone. So I'm hundred percent for the team, and I want to try my best for the team. Are you allowed to play against Leeds? Do you know? Yeah, um, we played, <laughs> played against them a couple of weeks ago. Of course you did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've played them already, yeah. Yeah, yeah I for, I'm forgetting. <laughs> so so we, that must have been quite a weird experience for you. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, weird to see all the um, all my old teammates, shall I say, and the coaching staff. But yeah, obviously, we're good to get the win over. Was there a little bit of you thinking, um, I can show you what I can do here? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, I came here to get more of an opportunity to play and to prove myself. So, obviously, getting a win over them meant a lot. Um, Lewis, you were born uh, Leeds, grew up in Leeds, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, what who, What was your first time at your club? When did you start playing? Uh, I was pretty straight in. I was like three or four at Ult uh, Ultimate Raiders. Yeah. So, yeah, I, my dad used to play as well. So, you kind of, not forced me into it, but I always wanted to like do the same thing. He was just like, yep. Yeah. Go in, you go straight in for it. And when did you start to think I could potentially make a, a career out of this? I could potentially be a professional. Um, maybe when I was, maybe when I was about eighteen, really. As soon as you kind of sign the deal, really, and that's when you kind of got your foot in the doorstep. But still, probably only until probably about a year or two ago, maybe. Right. Okay. Probably. So that's a fairly recent thing. It's not like thirteen or fourteen people saying that lad's going to go far. It won't, were people saying that to you at the time? Um, people can say it to you, but really, it's, there's nothing really guaranteed, is there? Really, yeah. so I've always, kind of, until it kind of happens, I'm always focused and just trying to improve and make sure I actually do get there. I think um, the maturity of a, of a young person really helps in terms of their ability to focus on, you know, potentially reaching that professional career, isn't it? Because uh, there's so many distractions going on. Uh, you know, as a young man, there's all sorts of stuff going on. 
uh, and and you can you can not lose focus as it were yeah. on that and it's it's maintaining that focus that must be one of the vital things to do if you're going to become a professional rugby league player yeah i'm probably used to because my dad's even from amateur it was i could have like the best game ever and he'd still kind of humble me <laughs> and i've um, been used to that really and it's still probably the same here with tony like i had a few good games past few weeks and he was still like yeah you need to do this you need to do that and i agreed and it spurs going to be even better I suppose you don't need anybody telling you about all the good bits, do you, really? You, you, you know yeah. when you've done something well and you think, I, I, that was a great pass, I made a great move, I was in the right place. Um, it, it's the bits where you, you're not necessarily you know, done, done right that you just need a reminder, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, sometimes, well, you know when you've had a, a shocker, but there's a few um, occasions where you might be 50-50 and you and the coach might not disagree, but you might have certain opinions and uh, that's when you can probably learn more from like another person's um, opinion. Yeah. And Mouis, for you, uh, you was born in Nigeria. Yeah. And and where did you play? When did you first start playing rugby league? Um, primary school. Obviously through um, PE. I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing. Really, but I was kind of an aggressive kid, so give me a chance to um, lay it out. So I started playing in like year five and yeah. My local club, Huntsville Warriors, just come, my, one of the coaches come and to coach us every like Wednesday. And through that, they thought, oh yeah, um, I should come down and try try out. So I just, and then I tried out and never, just playing ever since. I never thought that I'd make it professional. I just enjoyed it. So year five is sort of like age 10. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that was the first time you started yeah. seriously picking up a rugby ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, so every... Everything just happened all of a sudden. Really, I just took it step by step. I never, I didn't, even, I didn't know rugby was a professional sport. I just, I just played out of enjoyment, and yeah, luckily I've ended up where I am. And and you, you saw it as an outlet for you know, for aggression, for yeah. energy, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And and did you find yourself uh, quickly thinking, I've got the skills for this? This is you know, this this come this comes naturally. Um, I didn't really focus on that sort of. I just used to get the ball and just run and. I, just, I never, I never passed anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Passing, or, <laughs> I never passed. I just, I just run, um, just, just, run just run and tackle hard. <laughs> um, that's what I always used to do. Obviously, through obviously when you get to academy, everyone focuses more on skill and all that sort of stuff. So I can I struggled with it because everyone else had been passing and had pretty good skills. So I just really work hard on that. I'm still working hard to get more skillful. Yeah. When did you? F- start to think, um, I, you know, I could potentially become a professional. Did somebody tap me on the shoulder and say, you know, you, if you focus on this, son, you can go far. Um, when did, did you have one of those moments or? No, not really. Um, everything's really happened step by step, really. I've never looked that far ahead. Yeah. Um, I, wouldn't, I would never guarantee to get a first contract. I just had to earn it, obviously, through playing and proving that I am good enough. So... Um, so obviously, uh, your 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 club is Leeds Rhinos. You're with us on loan, and you did some other loan: Featherstone, Dewsbury, yeah, and uh, Newcastle as well. Yeah. Were, were, did you enjoy those? Were they were they beneficial to you in terms of uh, progressing your career? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, any experience is a good experience. So, obviously, going to different clubs and meeting different people, um, you learn new things from everyone, everyone, everyone you meet, don't you? So yeah, I joined every single one of them. And I've been doing my research. I, I've got this right, and I, with your Nigerian descent, uh, yeah. uh, you are uh, there is a, a Nigerian rugby league team. Yeah, yeah. So you, you you could are they giving you the call to uh, talk um, to you about potential international? <laughs> yeah, yeah, poten- potentially. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to organise something. So so hopefully in, in the near future I could have a team. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah, playing in the World Cup. Well, I mean, anyway, you might, hey, hey let, it, could, it could be England, it could be Great Britain, you never know. Yeah, you know. Just see what happens. See what happens, see where you can go. Well, good luck with that. Thank Great you. to talk to you guys. We'll come back to you very, very soon. Uh, we're going to have a quick break now from Give the Lads a Quick Break, and afterwards we'll be talking to the guys in more detail about the grand return of the fans to the stadium, Hull College Craven Park, of course, welcoming back the fans uh, this Sunday. But for now, Let's get to know a little bit more about Albert Vetti. Um, 
Um, my hero would be uh, my dad. Ooh. Um, probably like Hawaii. Yeah, somewhere like chilled. Oh, my biggest fear. I don't know. Probably like failing. Uh, my kids. Proudest. Probably my kids is, again. Um, probably Greg Minikin because he he tells heaps of jokes, <laughs> so he, he'll keep me entertained. Yeah. I won't get bored. Uh, welcome back to Rovers Roundup Live with GNC Industrial Cleaners. And if you want to see more of uh, that Albert Betty uh, video, all you have to do is uh, check out Hulk here TV. You'll get the full version of uh, everything you want to know about Albert Betty. Uh, we can't wait to welcome you guys back to the ground. Bull College Craven Park this Sunday. Certainly not being the same without you. Quite a weird experience watching a game of professional rugby league without a crowd, but we're going to fix that this Sunday. Fans are reminded to check the website, our website, hullkr.co.uk, for all the information you need on the operational changes that will be in place, because it'll be a slightly different experience. Uh, the, the price to pay for getting the fans back in, uh, for example, one-way systems and staggered arrival times. You'll get all the details on the website, hullkr.co.uk. Uh, Lewis, you'll have experienced the fans at Old College Craven Park. Um, when he was on loan, of course, you'll know what it's like. You must be excited that the prospects are getting a decent crowd back in. Yeah, I've, I was saying to Muslim when I first came, um, one of my favourite games I've ever played was the Hull Derby. And it was it was packed out and it was like nothing I've ever ex experienced before. So um, obviously there's not going to be as many this time, but even when we played um, Wakefield the other, the, um, the other day, there was only a few hundred there, but they were still really loud. And um, I think it helped us. You, uh, you'd be hoping to be part of the uh, the next derby, of course. I mean, to, to have played in that derby game, that must have been a really exciting experience for you. The, the noise and the intensity out on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. Even when we came out um, to warm up, the amount of um, FC fans were there, we were booing us, I and mean, obviously vice versa. It was just, um, it just got you pumped, really. I enjoyed it. Moise, you must be looking forward to it as well. You know, you'd be hoping to, get, to be on the team sheet, get involved in the game and uh, be in front of those fans. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, on um, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> on Sunday, there, was Sunday. A, there were a few fans there. So it was, it was good to see people there watching the game. And obviously, they give you a bit of a boost when you're fatigued and when things are going your way. So really looking forward to seeing the fans back. How weird is it being playing in an empty stadium? really weird because obviously when there's no one there you can hear what everyone's saying when the fans are there you're struggling to hear yourself think so yeah but they bring a buzz to the to the game so it's, it's good to have, it's good to have them back i think i think the players have done really well because the, the, the couple of three games i've seen uh without a crowd um it felt at the very beginning almost like uh, uh a training game yeah but once everybody got started it yeah. seemed to it seemed to just turn into a normal, feel like a normal game. But at the start, it was like, almost like a training session. Yeah. Is, is that how it feels to you guys on the pitch? How, how does it feel when you're starting a game without a crowd? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, just it's like just like you're training, but against a full full side, so it's quite weird. But you get used to it a bit. You got used to it, so yeah. it's going to be different again, isn't it? I mean, yeah. obviously, you've had you've had the Wakefield game on Sunday, yeah. uh, so you started to get that. It, it's uh, it's fun having the crowd having a go mm. at the players, opposition, and uh, uh, home fans, and uh, and also a bit of banter with the ref, shall we say? A bit yeah. of banter, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, let me ask some random questions. And here we go. When did uh, uh, who who's your best? We'll start with you, Lewis. Who's your best mate at the club? Who who you been making friends with? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone calls us um, boyfriends. So, um, <laughs> Get a bit joke here, but me, me and Moz um, come with each other's training, so... Right, so you share, you share a car, do you? Yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, so you you become bezies? Pe pe people say people say that. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I think everyone gets on, to be fair. There's, there's quite a close um, bunch. 
So yeah, it's really good. Cool. And um, what's the best thing about playing? Uh, what's the best thing about being a professional rugby league player? Ooh. Pro well, uh, well, for me, I've always wanted to do it since I was like three or four years old. Yeah. And to, to even like you get paid, like, paid to do it. And just the fact like it's just on like TV and stuff and like you can, your family and all can watch your friends. It's just like next step up really. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Mills? Um, personally, I just ex the experience and just meeting new people and I, that's why I enjoy. Obviously, everything else that comes with it, there's a bonus. Yeah. And I mean, you, you would, you'd you have to be doing something you might not necessarily want to do as for a living, you know what I mean? Yeah. You might be uh, stuck in an office or in a factory or, you know, I don't know, whatever. whatever you, what, what do you think you would be doing if you weren't playing professional rugby league? Mm -hmm. Studying or... You know what I mean? Working on a mucky building site. I don't know. <laughs> what, I don't know what what you guys will be doing. But it, yeah, what, what about this over there? What What's the worst thing about? Uh, not that you complain, of course, being a professional sportsman. But what's the What's the toughest thing? Shall we say? Not the worst. The toughest thing. Conditioning. Yeah, pro <laughs> you feel me and was like early twenties, and we feel about seventy years old. <laughs> so yeah, always stiff, always sore. Yeah. Some days just can't really walk. But apart from that. Bad knees. Yeah, you can't really complain. Don't you? He's already. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Getting on. Getting uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm in my 50s. I go running. You want to you, you wanna wait till your, your knees are 50-something, I tell you. Uh, although I'm trying to be a professional uh, rugby player. Um, and I suppose there's a lot of... Um, uh, you know, you've you've got to you've got to behave yourself in your lifestyle, haven't you? And that that must be stuff. The 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 strictures, uh, the 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 things that you've got to do in your life. For, for example, eat well, uh, early to bed, and all the rest of it. Is that is that difficult keep, keep, keeping that um, keeping that sort of lifestyle up? How how do you find that? Um, it can be difficult sometimes, but again, once you get into a routine, it comes easy, and you feel the benefits of it. You feel better mentally, physically. Yeah. So makes you want to carry on and carry on doing the right things, eating the right things and going about life the right things. Am I right in saying the club sort of give you a fair idea of what they expect, you know, what what your diet should be, what sort of things you should be eating? Uh, I think, well, Coop's our conditioner was on a lot of a week. He was kind of saying it's it's more up to you kind of thing because obviously if you're putting bad food in your body, you're going to give yeah. yourself a more chance of playing worse and stuff. So I think <clears throat> every, everyone knows what to do really yeah it's, yeah it's just on the person really some people can eat whatever and they'll be flying every week they won't really put any way but then some lads will have a cake and put a stone <laughs> on so it's just it's just on the person really i reckon yeah tell me about it uh what do you what do you have for breakfast this morning for example um i like protein oats with some raisins in it a protein drink the porridge like porridge oh porridge, porridge right protein and raisins sounds great <laughs> it is, it is. Actually, I, I, I actually enjoy it. Right I don't mind porridge. What about you, Lewis? I'm boring. I just have cereal every day. Do you? Yeah, just standard cereal. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, what sort of music do you like? What's what do you put, on, put what are you putting on the car when you're travelling to to training? I like all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we can adapt. We can adapt to anything. I like a bit of everything. Do you still, I mean, what similar stuff? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we'll listen to the basic, um, same music. This, this is why the Bezies, you say. <laughs> they, 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 they even like the same music. There'd probably be a few times where, like, if it was driving, you couldn't hear the music, and then you heard it, you'd be thinking, what, why are they listening to that? Yeah. Like, it'd, it'd shock you some stuff to listen to. So. <laughs> Quite embarrassing some of the playlists we've got, but yeah. It's crowd good. pleaser, that's what we are. Yeah. Crowd pleasers. Oh, I go in the car and the fan, they're listening to Chris DeBerg or uh, <laughs> some... some Cyrus. Some, some yeah, more. Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I can see why you're embarrassed. It's all right. No, it's all right. Uh, and uh, if you had, um, uh, if you know, we've been locked down. We can't move anywhere. We can't do anything. Favorite place? If you could fly or get to tomorrow, where would it be? How about that for a random question? Um, I can't. I want to go to Australia. Fancy Australia? Yeah. It's loads of things to see, and yeah, it's warm. Yeah, um, probably Aust Australia, like the Bali's. Even in, I've wanted to, uh, go, wanted to go to America as well. Yeah. Just a few places, anywhere far. I've never really been anywhere too far, so just, you know. Let's hope the rugby league gives you an opportunity, Lewis. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Um, let's look forward to the game then to finish off at the weekend. Uh, 
moving from the disappointment of Wakefield, you know, there was a lot of expectation there, especially after the Castleford game. Um, so you think lessons learned in, in terms of what we need to take on board? How, how are we going to go forward from here? Um, probably just keep a humble mind on it. That, that might have been one of the reasons why we started slow against Wakefield, because obviously they, um, they've been struggling and I think we might have gone into it a bit... Um, just expecting to go straight through them, really. So I think the same, the same with Lee. They've been doing some decent rugby, just not being able to get the win. So yeah. they have to start well. It's unfortunate, isn't it, Mouis? Could you come up against a team that haven't won a game, although they got close a couple of times? They're going yeah. to win a game eventually, aren't they? You just don't want it to be you, and it turned out that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think we should need to focus on ourselves and do the right things, and the results will come. Um, to go, to going forward to Lee, what what's your initial thoughts on how we're going to go about winning the game? Because they're another side who are struggling. They'll yeah. want to pick up a win, obviously, <clears throat> and they'll 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 think that they've got a, a chance against us on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, they'll be hungry. Um, they haven't won yet this season, so do want to try their best. But as long as we try our best and from the start, from get go, give it to them, we should be fine. And do you think we'll have more uh, more hunger, more desire after the defeat? Is that is that something that we're going to use to our advantage? Yeah, I reckon we'll bring the energy a lot more, especially with the crowd as well, to boost us up. We're planning to start well, so hopefully we can do well. Good to talk to you, fellas. Thank you very much for being with us. Has it been too much of an ordeal? No, I enjoyed yeah. myself. <laughs> oh, good. They say all the right things. Um, thank you very much for joining us on the Rovers Roundup Live in partnership with uh, GNC Industrial Cleaners. It's been uh, a lot of fun. We can't wait for the game at the weekend. Once again, a reminder that um, uh, if you're watching this before the league game, make sure, and you are attending, to go and check the website, hullkr.co.uk, for all the information you need to enjoy the game. Scream and shout for the boys on Sunday and enjoy the match, and hopefully we'll grab the two points. Uh, to uh, Lewis and to Mouis, thank you very much. Great to talk to you guys and good luck for the weekend. Cheers, thank, thank you. you Thanks for having us.